Hello there, Ray here. Today guys, I have something really special to show you guys. What you are seeing is an AFK Ancient Debris Collector. With this crazy flying machine, it's capable for you to just AFK and obtain tons and tons of ancient debris. And whenever you need more, you can always come back to this machine and get much, much more. And remember guys, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these awesome devices. We designed this flight machine during our snapshot streams every Wednesday and Friday where the technical players work together to design new things for the snapshots. We had Comet 107 as well as Cheater Codes working on this with the help of Ping Yu, Extra Retta, Zoom, including you guys, the viewers. So if you guys want to take part in future builds, make sure to turn on your notifications as well as follow me on all my social links. And you guys could end up in my next video. If you guys don't know what Ancient Debris is, it is a new ore that can be found in the Nether Dimension. When you go ahead and smelt it down, it's going to turn into these Netherite scraps. You take four of these with four gold ingots and you can make yourself a Netherite ingot. These ingots can be combined with any diamond piece and then that will make the new type of armor which is Netherite. The armor as well as the tools are stronger and faster and take longer to break down as well. And overall they're just better. But if you are really rich, you can go ahead and convert nine of those netherite ingots into a block of netherite, which is overall a very cool looking block and has some special property. If you want to learn more about netherite, I covered it in a snapshot review, which I'll link below. Now ancient debris itself can be found throughout the entire nether dimension from the very bottom up to pretty much the very top of the world. Although it's much more common to find it at the bottom of the world. Now, Cheater Codes actually looked into the Minecraft code to get the exact locations of where you can find this new ore. So lowest you can find it is Y level 8, which is just three blocks above the bedrock. So here's a bedrock at the very bottom of the nether. Let me go up one, two, three. And this is a level where you can start finding nether right at. The highest you can find it is actually quite high, which is Y level 120, which is way up here. So that is two blocks underneath of the bedrock setting. So you can find it up at this level here as well. But when it comes to concentrated netherite, the most netherite can be found between Y level 8, which is down here, and Y level 24. So here is Y level 24, and this is about 7 blocks underneath of those lava lakes that you find in the nether, which are always at the same Y level. So it can be quite a bit underneath of the lava lakes. And that's why you won't find it as much while you're just walking through the nether because it's going to be down underneath your feet. So if you want to mine this stuff up, the best place to go is Y level 17. This is where you'll find the highest concentration. If you want to use explosives to clear a big area, you'll uncover the most netherite by clearing from here outwards. But there's a downside to being down this low. And that is there is a lot of lava down here. I mean, look how many lava pockets there is. Not only are these small lava pockets quite annoying, if you keep moving forward, you eventually run into these lava ravines, which are extremely full of lava, holding solid lava, as well as you can easily pierce up into these large lava lakes, which would just completely cover up anything that you're trying to find. There's also these cave-like bubbles of lava, which you can find streaked throughout the bottom of the world. And there's no really lava sponge to clear all this stuff. So if you're trying to do long-term nether right mining you don't want to be doing it down here but there is an ideal spot that we found which using our calculation is actually up here near the top of the bedrock this is because the way the game actually generates those lava pockets which you see in the world so we looked into how these pockets are formed and how high can they go up as they are really the only obstacle way up here the majority of these lava pockets will form between y level 10 and y level 118 if there is a cave that intersects then there is possible for lava sources to be placed as high as 124 and as low as Y level 4. But these are quite rare especially having caves up this high. So using that we actually found the ideal place to mine up netherite consistently for long periods of time. And that is exactly what this machine does. What we have here is Comet's tunnel bore. This thing is designed to duplicate TNT then throw it forward and that perfect timing will launch it over here in front of this netherite so it explodes in midair, destroying not only netherite below it, but as well as above it, clearing in such a large area that the entire machine can continue to move forward in the new area that was produced. And I'll show you guys this amazing fly machine running in just a second. But tunnel bores weren't designed to go through liquids, meaning that if we would come across one of these lava pockets, the TNT wouldn't be able to do any damage to blocks, since the lava pouring over the blocks would protect them from the TNT blowing them up. 
So we design an extension onto this tunnel bore to be a self-returning sweeping fly machine. This thing will not only go out in front of the tunnel bore removing all the liquids, but it will also collect any netherite that got exposed. Since netherite cannot be blown up by explosions unless in block 36 form. So after each explosion, the only thing that's going to be left showing here is the netherite, and our machine will come by, pick it up, and take it to the far end. The extension itself also takes up room, which we have to clear out using another tunnel bore. This one here is also one of comments, and works in the newer version. This tunnel bore will clear out area big enough to actually allow our extension flying machine to fit in it. So let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to remove this observer just so it moves one time. Otherwise this thing will just keep going forward all by itself, continuing to clear the nether rack while collecting all the ancient debris. So to start this up, I'll just power this and you can see how the tunnel board works with the TNT dupers and the TNT blowing away the netherite. Then we have our flying machine. This is a self-returning flying machine that can sweep across. It is able to sweep six blocks and this is high enough as the tunnel board. That way we don't have to worry about any netherite accidentally going in and clogging the system. Everything else can be destroyed by this thing except for the ancient debris and if this sweeper didn't pick it up they would eventually come and hit this and stop it. Because ancient debris doesn't spawn any higher than this piston here we don't have to worry about anything up here coming over here and clogging up the machine. The sweepers are collecting from 120 all the way down to here. This is also able to push away any lava. Once the machine gets to the far end, it will then hit up against the wall, pushing any of the ancient debris that it collected. This piece here is actually part of the flying machine, and I'll explain more why that is there. And then it will leave it in the wall over here, so then when you are done doing AFK section, you, you can find all the ancient debris along one side of the wall. Then you can easily come and mine it up. If you wanted to, you can also add in another system to kind of collect all this into a central location. But for the time being, this is a nice place to just come and pick up all your ancient debris. Notice how the machine, once hit the wall, it just automatically turned around and started going backwards, carrying all the pieces with it as well. Now the sweepers are also sweeping away any lava that has happened to flow out. So once lava sources get around about here, the machine will break them by smushing them. And this is important because if the lava gets way over here, it can ignite these TNTs, which are part of the tunnel bore. And it has to be at least three gaps of air underneath in order to lava not to be able to reach it. So any lava down here isn't going to bother it, but any lava that is higher will bother it. And that's why the sweepers are also destroying that. So it kind of does two things at once. Then the machine comes back into this holding bay and then it would just automatically start up by pulling this piece. But I have disabled it by stopping this piston here. So let's activate again. You can watch how the tunnel bore has a little timer back there which will time the TNT blowing up. Now what we have that ancient debris in front of here for is to actually prevent the explosions that come off of these from blowing up anything that is over here. So the machine is in a stocking bay. It has a couple of pieces that stick out pretty far. And if they were blocks that could get blown up, this TNT could happen to blow those pieces up. So by putting an ancient debris piece on the fly machine, it is a movable block that can also not be blown up, which protects all the really fragile slime stone behind it. We also do use a really cool trick, which happens to do with honey blocks. They're actually useful for more than just what most people think they're used for. Because their size is slightly smaller than a normal block like a slime block, Explosions can actually not reach them because they're slightly smaller. So if explosion would occur right about here, it would try to go past this stone block by going over top of it. Because the honey blocks are slightly shorter, notice how I can go from here down here, the explosions are protected from this block here. This is extremely useful when compacting limestone near explosions like we have right here. Because we're trying to get this explosion to be as close as possible to this so it clears out enough area for it to fly through without it actually blowing up the flying machines. Now the length of this machine depends on your render distance. My render distance is set to 12, which is typical for most servers. This allows you to have 10 chunks of entity processing chunks on either side of the player, meaning that the entire length of this flying machine is 10 chunks long. So if I do F3 plus G, you can see this chunk here is the last one that is going to be entity processing. This is important because the TNT has to be in entity processing chunks for it to be able to move, get launched, and explode into this chunk. So if we count these chunks, it'll be a total of 10 chunks for this entire machine. 
And then over here, there is one extra chunk. This is the chunk that the player will be in. So you can actually make this machine as long as you want, depending on what you set your chunk render distance to on a single player world. On multiplayer, you're limited to what the server has their render distance. But if you want to, you can also mirror this flying machine on this side. And that way you can clear almost twice as much area all within the one player's render distance. It is important that when you AFK this machine, you don't go like over here in AFK because that's going to be too far. And the machine at the very end is not going to blow up any of the blocks. And actually some really weird stuff occurs when flying machines try to fly in unloaded chunks. Even ones that aren't entity processing. So these tunnel boards are relatively safe because they don't really have to worry about blocks being in the way because they destroy them. They don't have to worry about lava being in the way because this thing destroys it. They don't have to worry about ancient debris being in their way because this thing will sweep it all to one end. The same thing can't be said with this tunnel bore, which kind of is going off on its own without much protection. Luckily, there isn't very much lava pools at this level. As I put this fly machine as high as it can go, while still clear enough to allow that machine over there to fit in. And the machine is thin enough, it really doesn't get bothered by lava pools on the side. The only thing that could cause problem is if there is a lava pool that is kind of down low and just sets there when the machine comes by, lava could try to ignite this TNT if it is within range. So lava would have to be right about here. Any lower, it wouldn't do any damage. And what it could do is ignite it on fire. This would cause the TNT to just fall into lava and be extinguished so the machine wouldn't actually blow up but the machine would run into the wall which means it would stop and then the only thing what would occur is the flying machine in here when it take off it would accidentally grab this block and it would stop itself so even when it does run into a problem it doesn't like self-destruct or anything and it's really easy to fix it by just taking these blocks back off again and moving this forward one more time now the way that we're moving this extension forward is using quite a few different extensions to push everything forward. The main piece we're pushing forward is this self-returning fly machine that is only two blocks wide. And we're pushing it from such a location that as soon as it moves one block, it will automatically update itself and start to fly. And we set these extensions in such a way that they will be able to handle this type of takeoff. This makes it really easy to start up the fly machine when it moves forward. It just automatically does it rather than having to move forward and then update the machine to make it move. The sweeper itself consists of two different segments to allow us to sweep away the maximum amount of lava in order to not break that machine over there. So we have a back segment as well as a front segment that have pistons on it. And as these pistons get closer and closer to this wall, any blocks that come in contact with them will end up hitting against these pistons and being pushed all the way to the end. That way you don't have to worry about blocks like attaching to any of the slime over here because I'll never make it over there. The first thing that comes in contact is these pistons right here. Any items that are hooked to this slime here are actually going to be pushed off by these pistons. So they'll be pushed in front and then left there. So let's go ahead and start. You guys can watch how this thing all pushes forward. A bunch of little extensions. Notice how these first pieces get pushed forward and then the fly machine gets started. And it's going to have all these pistons pushing along the wall. We didn't used to have it one closer, but sometimes it would pick up another rack, which isn't something you wanted to do. We just wanted to pick up the ancient debris as well as knock out the lava. And from this location here, it can do both very well while still allowing any blocks that were protected by the lava to then be destroyed by the tunnel board later on. You can see how we're getting closer to this lava source. So next time it comes through, it will destroy that lava source, allowing all these blocks that are kind of hidden behind it to then be blown up later on. Another rack is really, really weak to blast, allowing us to blow up a lot of it with only one piece of TNT. The downside to having a self-returning fly machine is if it has two segments in front, if one segment kind of gets pushed out way in front, the second segment could leave with the first segment still being left behind. And in rare circumstances, if there's like a cave behind the wall, it could push the first segment into that wall and leave it behind and only take back this one. That's the only other way that this machine could break. And if that occurs, the machine will just stop as it relies on these pieces to return. So you don't have to worry about this thing like running into the wall and crashing into like some lava or, or something else. And if that occurs, all you have to do is rebuild this first extension onto this machine over here as it'll just be left behind over there. Ideally, this should be one segment, but it becomes really difficult to make it one segment while keeping it in the push limit and preventing blocks from sticking onto these slime blocks here. But we'll continue to work on this to see if we can improve that part of it. Now this observer was in place. You can notice how when the machine comes back into the station, the tunnel boards and everything else will automatically take off for the next turn. So this can be all automatic. When it comes in here, it's going to activate this piston here. 
and it's going to pull this and then start back up again. So you could have this thing running in an infinite loop, just constantly going forward, collecting more ancient debris, and continuing to move itself forward. Now the tunnel board themselves, they do have minecarts that are on rails, and if mobs spawn here, it's possible for them to like kind of bump the minecart. Or if you have endermen, they do like to pick up TNT. So best to run this while you have a hostile mob switch, or just make sure that mobs don't spawn over here. Now the way that we're moving the first tunnel board over there is, let's go ahead and start this up. We have a little extension over here which stops this fly machine, it's extended piston. This also pushes and it goes over here and just updates this piston which goes into this simple tunnel bore. And this thing has its own little delay system with a fly machine that goes back and forth. Now when we were first trying to design this we thought we could put this entire section within the area that this thing could clear. If we succeeded that means we wouldn't have to use this tunnel bore. We were actually limited to a very small area. If we go to the opposite side of the tunnel board, you can see the small area which we would have to try to fit this into. So here is the very edge of it, and we'd have to try to fit that entire fly machine between there and the wall. All while making sure it doesn't get blown up by this TNT which blows up right about here. Now protecting the slime would be possible by using this new ancient debris or netherite blocks because they could block all the explosion. But by blocking the explosion, we also are protecting this nether rack behind, which means we're not clearing out this area for the flying machine to fit into. So it's a very tricky problem. Ideally, what you'd want is probably some extension over here that flies over here when it hits a wall, then goes sideways, then hits another wall, then self returns this direction, and then also self returns this way, all while being in a very limited area and capable of pushing as many blocks as possible. But even then, there is a small area where the slime machine flies that isn't necessarily being cleared of the ancient debris, so it could eventually clog up with it and stop. Now the idea is to try to make it as AFK as possible, which is very difficult to do with all the lava. With this setup here, you don't have to really worry about all these extensions, you just have to kind of concentrate on this one. Once it stops, your machine will stop. So by limiting down the area that could break to being the smallest piece as possible, it's less likely for it to break, especially if there isn't really much lava pockets in its way. Now you could also semi-AFK it by watching if any lava comes up, you can just scoop it up and remove it. And if you want to, you could just build this small tunnel bore just in the front of it and just clear out a small area, either in the ceiling of the nether or the floor of it. In the floor you're going to have to deal with more lava pockets, but you're more likely to run into ancient debris. But because lava coming from the ceiling is a really big problem with a tunnel bore with all these exposed parts as well as TNT, it's a lot easier to just build the fly machine up here. You don't have to worry about that kind of problem occurring. Now if you want to, you could build an entire ceiling above this to try to protect it from lava coming down. But it would have to be careful around the edges so it doesn't like come over here and update anything else. These are ideas we're planning to implement into the AFK Ancient Debris fly machine. Because fly machines consist of honey blocks or slime blocks which stick to other nearby blocks, the tunnel bores have to make holes big enough so that nothing touches. But with nether rack being very easy to blow up, this is not such a big problem. Overall, this is definitely going to be the way to farm up large amounts of netherite, especially if you're trying to make netherite blocks. And whenever it comes to collecting something that's quite rare and generating in the game of Minecraft, it means you're going to have to explore or, in this case, destroy a lot of terrain in order to find it. So similar to people like trying to mine entire deserts for sand, people are going to be destroying huge portions of the nether just to try to find some of this ore. It'll be interesting to see how server's nether dimension will look after this update is implemented. I ran this fly machine for a little while and you can see the area that it cleared out and how it exposes all the bedrock on the ceiling. This is what it kind of looks like if the ceiling is in a really shallow place like the soul sand valley, you can actually see all the way up into the bedrock. Otherwise, in thicker areas on the nether, you wouldn't really be able to see these holes. And I'd love to hear your guys' opinions about that as well as this flying machine. If you guys have any suggestions on how to improve it, let me know down in the comments. And make sure guys to join our snapshot testing streams where we open up a server with the viewers to design cool things like this. And you can also work on other stuff if you want to. And don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as share with other Minecrafters so they can learn about the cool automation that can be used in collecting up tons of ancient debris. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.